Happy Saturday, Internet. We've got a lot to cover, so let's just jump right into the most important news in your world this week. This is The Loop. The United States Supreme Court announced in a historic 5-4 decision yesterday that same-sex couples should be allowed to marry in all 50 United States. It's the single most significant civil rights victory of our time. In the majority opinion statement, Justice Anthony Kennedy wrote, Under the Constitution, same-sex couples seek in marriage the same legal treatment as opposite-sex couples, and it would disparage their choices and diminish their personhood to deny them this right. He was joined in the majority by Justices Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Stephen G. Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan. The court was asked back in October to review this issue, but they declined at the time. Since then, several states have passed pro-gay marriage laws, bringing the number of states allowing the practice in total to 37. This dramatic cultural shift was the impetus that the Supreme Court needed to pass a change of this size to our Constitution. The official name of the combined case is Obergefell v. Hodges, which will go down in history with other landmark cases such as Roe v. Wade and Brown v. Board of Education. President Obama has a lot to be smiling about this week, calling this decision a victory for America. The Supreme Court's other major decision in the past week was to uphold a key element of the Affordable Care Act, the tax credits used by American citizens to buy health insurance. These two rulings will in many ways shape the legacy of the Obama administration as they have been his key social and legislative issues throughout his tenure as president. Well done, Supreme Court, and well done, America. In France, a man was discovered to have been decapitated by a suspected ISIS supporter who tried to blow up a factory in saint quentin Falavier. His head, displayed near the Air Products factory, was covered in Arabic writing. An Arabic employee of the transportation company managed by the victim was arrested near the factory and is the current lead suspect. Earlier that morning, a transport truck from the victim's company deliberately rammed into a pile of gas cylinders at high speed, causing a small explosion. Early reports say there were two attackers in the car, but at this time, no other suspects have been announced by police. Meanwhile, in Paris, taxi drivers blocked roads to airports and train stations as part of a massive nationwide riot against Uber. They burned tires and overturned cars along major streets, escalating until police had to intervene with tear gas. French taxi unions have long been up in arms against Uber, specifically because their service Uber Pop does not require drivers to pay heavy licensing fees to chauffeur passengers, putting taxi companies at a huge disadvantage. Reportedly, French taxi revenues have fallen between 30 and 40 percent in the last two years because of all the increased competition. As of today, Uber Pop is banned in Paris. It remains to be seen if the ban will hold. North Korea is in the midst of its worst drought in over a century, and surprisingly, South Korea is offering aid under only one small condition. North Korea just has to ask for help. The nation's announced the announcement of the drought was widely considered a cry for help without asking outright by the global community, and so far only China has pledged aid to the much maligned dictatorship. That South Korea, a foe of North Korea for over half a century, is so willing to offer assistance is pretty remarkable. But as dire as the situation is in North Korea, I doubt that they will ever ask South Korea for assistance. This past Thursday, Google announced that they will offer free Wi-Fi to all of New York City by turning all 10,000 of the city's remaining telephone booths into ad-supported Wi-Fi pylons, which will also also offer free cell phone charging, free phone calls to anywhere in the U.S., and a touchscreen information hub. The pylons will be available across New York City this fall and show the potential of a Wi-Fi and smartphone-driven future, but also the last gasp of our telephonic past being torn away from our collective consciousness. It's a technological and social passing of the torch that will thrill many and potentially change the face of American communication. If you shop at Whole Foods, you may have been getting overcharged. I know, shocker of the century, but thanks to the NYC Department of Consumer Affairs, we now have proof that Whole Foods has been regularly overcharging customers for meat, dairy, and baked goods by overstating the weight of the items, listing them as far heavier than the products actually are. A single package of coconut shrimp at the retailer was marked up by an egregious $14.84. Let me reiterate, that's not how much the shrimp cost, that's how much more they cost than they were actually supposed to cost. Other overcharges ranged between $4 and $6 per item, and Whole Foods has publicly denied the allegations. Last year, Whole Foods paid $800,000 in fines and pledged to improve pricing accuracy, but it seems that this is still not the case. Out of 80 different products examined at Whole Foods, all of them had mislabeled weights, and the department found that many individual packages simply weren't weighed at all. Incredibly troubling news from what many Americans believe is the zenith of the grocery world. And finally, what did people love in media this week? In music, James Taylor topped the Billboard 200 with his new album, Before This World. In television, USA Suits owned the iTunes episode and season download charts. And at the box office, Jurassic World held on to number one with a $106 million gross last weekend, followed by newcomer Inside Out, which grossed 90.4 million. And that's everything that you need to know about your world this week. So this weekend, when you're rushing to attend your gay friends' impromptu weddings, give them the gift of knowledge on their special day, because until next Saturday, you're in the loop. I'm Matt Lieberman. Thanks for watching. This is SourceFed!
<laughs> okay, and I'm still afraid of the dark a little bit. <laughs> I know that's true. 